Shalom Yisrael. Yes. This is certainly a demonstration of the zenith, the apex, the epitome of the primordial nature that Yah put in man, he not found be stored from day one. There will be a concentra of praises unto him to acknowledge his might, his power. And when the day comes that we will need no man to teach us, this is what is going to resemble. Just a time of shaha. It is a bowing down and a submitting unto the Abba with great delight. And the knowledge of his great strength, his milchaya, the power of his military might and power. That he has brought us over our own turbulent trials that we perceive as trials. To bring us into the fullness, the tome, until it flows out of our ruach, the fullness and the riches, his great oshir, where there is abundance of the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach. And when we truly stand in the presence of the Most High, we realize where we are, in whose presence we are in. It is the opportunity of one's lifetime that he may have an audience with one of the great leaders. The President of the United States, when one has an audience with the Pope, then there is one thing that they constantly do. They search their attire to make sure that the protocol is proper and their dress is fitting and suited for one of such great esteem. So must we as the nation, the Am, the people of Yah, that we must be clothed with the garment, the keli, our clothing from head to feet. It is the sadiq, the righteousness of the character, and also the characteristics of Yeshua HaMashiach. That is why he begins his year the way he does. With the greatest of offerings, the zabak, the whole of the burnt offering, the full of the burnt offering, essentially that we allow our nature and the will of our desire to be consumed, to be consumed away by the flowing ish, his fire of judgment, the fire of his Torah, to consume, to destroy all the dross. And all of those things that inhibit us from walking in the perfect order of Yah. That when we come to the time of Shaut, the time of Pentecost, then there is a fervent outpouring of the Ruach HaChodash. Now those among Yisrael Yah have never grown. They have been stunted. They're immature. They have no sense of direction. They have not developed here. What a man is developed here, you've got to see it here. What are you? I am a development in process. I know that you think you possess it all. That's why fools love to talk and to compare their knowledge. A man of great wisdom, uh, he hears and he listens to show them how wrong they are. That's what we need. Raise up the nobiya, the great young men of strength and character and courage, great beauty. I'm getting older, and you are too. He's not using you all up. Forget that. You're not going to bring any dynamics to the truth. So raise up the young men like these that will have great strength. Not only do they have the persona of an ish, the physicality and strength, they have that beauty, they have that virtue. They haven't been tainted like we have with the religious whore. 
their minds develop but by the religious horse so raise them up yeah give them strength for they need that for the turbulent battle that is ahead greetings to you all our friends our listeners and by the way my enemies my oh ye but those that battle against me i greet you you shall be fed today with the fatness of his torah you shall get fat if your enemy is hungry i shall feed you i put it back in the sheath for the moment we do greet you all our friends our supporters you with your kindness we do appreciate that there is no lavish lifestyle here so it's not spent on that on the necessities to maintain this community you are grants your chance to come you will see you will understand your offerings and gifts a great I don't care how small you may think it is we have an a hold from Scotland you know the one from Scotland that called me his friend a coward jackass that's why I always warn men don't tell me how you love me you're not like the other men because your nature will rise up just like any other man don't tell me that It is your actions not your words that personifies one's value. I learned that as a young 23ish 4 year old young man. When the leader said to me, "Shut your mouth, brother. You don't even know what you're saying. Because your words shall be tried by the adversary against me." From that moment I learned how to shut up. This is a loquacious talkative generation. They don't know a damn thing, but they know everything. Men are so ignorant they can read one little verse and they think they have the dynamics of it. It doesn't come that way, Yisraya. The great revelation of that one Katuz so it takes a wise man to unwrap all that to make it known we have no man to teach us this profoundness but yet there is a khafa a messenger that yah has raised up so we greet you all again our friends our zakhin davis there in los angeles california when i come i will have you a hebrew name Also, our uh, Zachain Tayonia in Memphis, Tennessee. Those that are gathered with you all, our friends, Artesna there in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm sorry, in Tampa. We need men that are wise to do what. In order for we to understand this Pesach, I want to teach on that today. Its value and what was done. There is one word that I often use who shall be able to buy or kana that is what Yah has done in this Pesach he has for the second time he has purchased a people a divided house a people that has no wisdom of him and there's a reason why I want to read this before I began teaching. I am not going to tell you where it is. You will know whether it is a Torah, whether it is in the book. The hell we don't study the book anyway. We have difficulties finding the book of Zephaniah. And don't tell us to find the book of Obadiah. Or even venture to the book of Esther. These are the ones that think that they're wise and they struggle to find it. I had one to write me the other day and say, "Re ah, what translation you use? Whether you believe it or not, I use the old one that I've used all the time." Okay, JV. 
I simply study things differently than maybe you or others I examine every word. And if you do not grasp grammatics at all, if you have no knowledge of the command of definitives, you don't know what you're reading. And that's the fact of the matter. You may browse through it, you may graze through it, you may read it, and that one thing sticks out, and you want to speak on that to let everybody I know that, you don't know a damn thing. Because the matter is not concluded in that one verse. It's concluded in one thing, can I tell you? The tongue made the fullness. The volume of the book, he came in the fullness of the volume of the Sefer. So you can't get it that way. That's why we have ignorance so pronounced today. Blind ones trying to instruct the ones that are already blind. And they don't know a damn thing. I don't apologize for my grammatics, my speech. I have the ability to take well command of the grammatics of this phonics or the language that I am speaking. I care not to. I just want Yisraya to understand. How about that? I was working the other day on Yom Rishon, the second day, with my Shoah, the big bull. I call it my Shoah. He's big as a bull. He's just like the Cape Buffalo. And so we were laboring there. We were, at some points, I would say calculating from my ineptness of mathematical formulations. We pull 80 pound of tin, at least a mile and a quarter. It was a task. It was very urgent. It was toilsome. It was laboring. It exact a toll upon your physical and not only that, upon your mental as well. And so the person says to you, you're working the preacher pretty hard. My reply is, no, sir. We're working each other. You know why I could reply like that? Because I would not cause him to exact no more than me. And with the intensity of his labor, I will labor in the same intensified manner. And so when I was tired, can I tell you? He was tired too. So when he had to go the long way to uh, place each item in order, well, then on the next group, I went the long way. And then he went the long way. And then I went the long way. To be just. To show him I honor him just as much as he honors me. I will, my friend. If he's willing to exact this from his body for me, I may fall out, young Ark. But I will give you the same thing. I will give you the same measure of love you give me. And when he was taking his long strides down that 300 foot corridor to retrieve that tin. Well he would pick it up and stride. I said no I will not allow him to get ahead. So I would grab that tin and I would jog with it. Of course uh, I do that all the time. So it wasn't as taskful as it seemed. So when he got there, he was blowing. When I got there, I was blowing. You said that what your sure did? He gave it all. And this is the epic and the epitome of our great consideration of each other. That we consider our our thoughts and everything we do. I will not let the bull outbull me. Hallelujah. 
because I am what the Torah calls an Eri. I'm a lion of the tribe of Yehuda. So the lion can take the shore down the Cape Buffalo. As a fact, physically, no, with the power of his feth. That's what takes him down. He knows how to talk. I want to read this before I embark, engage upon this teaching. First of all, to show us one of the most prominent things that we must do, as Arzachini Yaramayar reminds us, we must shoot. We must turn around, Yisraya. We are traveling a path, a derech, a road that we have created in our own minds that are not based upon the principles of Torah. And so you all see in the condition of his people, he speaks by the mouth of the Nobi, the prophet, the messenger that stood before the throne, and the fire of the coals of the altar of Yahweh placed in his feth, upon his lotion, his tongue, that his words would be precise and pure and cutting. Cutting. And they will cut to the depths, the nephesh, the being of any man, any woman that hears it. This juvenile talk today doesn't cut. It doesn't cut to the root of what's in us. He says this. And I'm going to teach you a little while. All right. Yah says this emphatically. He speaks to his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, he says this. And I want to read one valuable verse out of all of this. He says, If you, O Yisrael, will return to Shub. If you will return, O Yisrael, saith, O Maria, he says to us, Return where? Unto me. Return unto my Torah. Return unto my mitzvah, the commands. That will produce a great fervor of love for Yah. And if you will put away, he says, if you will put away your, to Eba, your abominations, the filth of this nidha spirit of your mind, the filthiness that are so perverse and wicked, that your conscience cannot even register how vile and how wicked we are. There is no yare, there is no fear to cause us to tremble. There is no yira, no fear to cause us to reverence. Yeah, because uh, we return back unto our, to Abel, our filthy ways. The filth of our minds, the filth uh, of our thoughts, the filth of our superior concepts uh, against the Torah of Yah. He says, uh, put away your abominations uh, out of my sight. Out of my eye in, I see it, I perceive it. Uh, I know what I am seeing among the house, the nation of Yisraya. He said, then shall, uh, then you shall not be removed. If we do that, we shall not be removed. When I was a young one coming up in the knowledge of ignorance, we used to sing a song. I shall, we shall, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall, we shall, I shall not be moved. You all said that we would not be removed. Can he lie? So it is the truth. If we will put away the vileness of this to Ibba, this abomination and vile filth, and the practice of those things that are vile and corrupt, he said, we shall not be moved. And if you shall declare this or swear, that Yah, he is high, he is the one that is of the strength of the power to stand against the foes of hell and to supply the armament that you need to withstand every wild, every force of darkness. 
if you just live by it and declare that in your life, in your countenance, in your body, if you declare that, uh, that Yah lives and he lives in truth in the Torah, he lives in his uh, judgment, his mishpatim, he judge us. And he also lives in the sadiq, the righteousness of his character. He says, then the goyim, the nations, the heathens, the people that are disenfranchised uh, of your heritage. Uh, he said, the nations shall bless, they shall be rack. They shall bow themselves to Yah. With such a damn ignorant people. I say that to all Yisrael. The strength of our men, it is pureage. It is the weakness. They boast in their elementary, terry type of knowledge of Torah. When a man has a knowledge of Torah, it strengthens his resolve. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. I want this word to set like a course of fire upon your arse. I shall. And in him, the goyim shall receive great honor from Yah. He said, the cause of this, for this says Almighty Yah, he talks to the, ish, the men. And everyone will say, I'm a boy. Your boy, you're, in the, huh, you're a young, youthful little clown. He speaks to the men. Can I draw this out in a natural scenario? If you go to a place or a health center, you will see those you can tell by the body types who's coming in there, they don't work out. And all of a sudden you see the one that everything is proportioned. You know he works out. The other ones are pretenders. You know he eats well. He takes care of his, quote, Temple, unquote. You will know that by the physicality of that man, by the physicality of that woman. You will know that. I'm talking to the man now. You will know that that one has a physicality. That is what the word ish is. It is a man of physicality and of strength. And he nurtures his strength according to the applications of the Torah. Not according to the greed of his damn God. His belly. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. I am not going to stop saying that. We're the wise men among us. He says, speak to the men of Yehuda and Yerusha Halim. He says, I want you to break up this fallow ground and sow not thorns. We have sown the thorns and we know the parable of Yahshua. He says, uh, there's a word that is sown among thorns and all of that. Uh, he said, and what it does, it chokes out the Torah of Yah. And you can tell a man that his conscience uh, is thorny. There are thorns in his mind. Uh, and the word of Yah has no effective power in him. That's why we must be cognizant. I will not stop saying this of our ponim, our facial expression. You need to get the damn look off of your face. It's going to damn you. I don't care who you are. When a man is wise, you see it in his wisdom. When a child is happy, you see that. Hallelujah. He said, break up the fallow ground. And don't sow the word among thorns because the thorns are going to choke out. Your heart is hardened. It is a heart that is fallow. It is a hardened ground. And the only way you're going to break up that kind of ground, we have an instrument we call a time. It is a subsolar. And it gets down about four feet. You can only use one time at a time, even in the soil in this area. We have that 160 horsepower massive Ferguson tractor. 
And when you sit it down too far, it says to the tractor, the foulness or the foulness of the ground says, you're not going to break me up. So you got to raise the tie up, break up a little bit, go back, break a little bit. And then you get down below that subsurface. And that's what God's going to have to do. He's going to have to break you down. He said, break up the fallow ground. How does one break it up? We will not understand and appreciate the Pesach and the magnificent power of Yah unless the ground is broken. Isn't this the time that our Zachin Yaramiya, this is the season where the ground is broken? Isn't this the time to sow for the first fruit? Peri Rushon, the first fruit. Isn't this the time that you plow? Isn't this the time you break up the fallow ground? Isn't this the time you prep the soil to sow? At least in this area you do. How do, does one, how do we as a nation break up the fallow ground? You're going to need something sharper than that time to break this hardness of Yisrael. We need something like a two-edged sword, would you not think so? Because in this operation that he commands us to get all of us, he says here, he says, I want you to circumcise Brits of the covenant, Brits, Mila, Mila Brits. I want you to circumcise yourself unto Yah. Cut away the fatness of your ignorance, your stupidity, your arrogance, your pride. Your superiority, your superior concept. Cut away that damn vile nature. And he said, I want you to take away the foreskin of your conceited ways. All the ways of a man, they are right, they are pure in his own sight. But he ponders the ru'ach of a man. You got men can't quote one damn scripture, but they know everything. You got women that run their mouths and don't know a damn thing. You got men that read a verse and they understood the, and they understand the legitimacy of that. That's not so. There's that one verse I look at. That there is not a compilation of another hundred scriptures that uh, work in complicit or compliance with that. That you may get the revelation that he has hidden this from the wise and the prudent. He has revealed this unto the simple ones, the babes. And I know I'm simple. I'm glad I'm simple. I'm glad I'm one that is open to Yah's truth. He said, take away the foreskin of your love. He talks about the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants who is Yisra'ya of Yerushalayim. He says, unless my af, unless my fury come upon you like fire and burn that none can even put it out, quince it, because of the evil of your doing. We are people that we love rough. Rough. We love evil ways. Our thoughts are evil. Our ideas are evil. We practice evil things. He say, put it away. He commands us to put it away. Put it far from you. Put it out of your mind. Put away your evil ways. He commands us to do that. Does he not? Then how do we do it? That must be a Brit's Mila. There must be a circumcision of our bosom uh, by the power of the Torah. And there is only one that can circumcise that. That is the power and the revelation of Yoshua HaMashiach. You just don't know him. You would think that we would obey that. And hear what Yah says, would you not think? He concluded with us. And I would have begun teaching him. That we have a deformity. We are a deformed people. That is not a mockery of those that have some kind of malady. But you can look at people and you can look at their eyes and tell that there is a disease there. You've never looked at one. You can look at their eyes and tell that there's something that's just not square with that individual. So if we can look at each other and tell when something is just not square with the individual. There's something sick in our damn minds. We can look at an autistic child we can see in their eyes. 
We can see in the physical construct of their being. We can look at individuals that there's no physical malady there, but we can look at their eyes and tell that all is not wired straight. So I can look in your damn eyes. What am I saying? Your eye in. I can look at yours. I can look at yours and yours and yours as well. How can you do that? Because Shaul says, when a man is spiritual, he judges all things. He makes assessment. He gives his opinion of all things. He doesn't give a damn how he is judged. Because his walk expresses who he is. His character denotes his sadiq. Why would not we want men like that? That Yah would not have to warn us like he did Yahudah. He said to the men of Yahudah. Zachim ben Amin is going to teach the gate of the city to us. He's getting that prepared. It will be right for us. I know he will do an excellent job. And so we must prepare our minds and our hearts. What is our impediment? Why is it so difficult? I want to read this verse. That's why we don't understand the beauty of Pesach. We don't understand what Yah has done. That's why it is a frivolous activity and an event for most people that participate in it. It is not something of substance that genuined. They're worrying about their bread without leaven. They're so anxious to fill themselves with those things that destroy them. They're ready, ready to get back to their damn greedy, lustful ways. Damn a piece of bread. Your shoe is my lechon. He is my matter. What is this? He is that to me. We're so ready to appease the God of our belly. I don't mince with my words. And I'm not afraid of any man whether he kills me or not. Can I tell you something, Zarkane? I was telling Oxymion, I said, I've lost three fights in all of my years of living. And I said, everyone I lost, I started it. And the one with Rosalind McMurray, she, she kicked the dog stumping out of me. She whipped me. Because everybody would say, Rosalind can beat boys and she can't beat me. I will never forget where I fought her at... Uh, at Druid Hills Elementary School. Right there at the little summer pool that they were open once a day. And I attacked Rosalind and she whipped the hell out of me. And I knew that my reputation would be sorted. So again, I tried to whip Rosalind and every time she would throw me to the ground. Now, I was a tough kid. She whipped the hell out of me. Every time. I'm trying to redeem my reputation because I know it's going to spread. We didn't have telephones, but everybody knew she whipped me. And so every time I tried to overpower Rosalind McMary, she whipped me. And she would say, go on, boy, stop. My pride of my shame will not let me stop. She whipped me. And so as she matured into a woman, I didn't see her for many, many years. And one day, I saw Rosalind. Here I am, 235, 40 pounds. I'm a man now. Strong as a bull, fit as a fiddle, can take on a bear. I saw Rosalind. I said, excuse me, ma'am. Is your name Rosalind McMurray? Said, yes. I said, do you recall me? What I told her, my nature, oh! <laughs> I said, Rosalind, can I say something to you? I said, uh, you remember that day you whipped her first? She said, I didn't beat you all now. She's a woman now, I'm a man now. So her, her, her concept of me is totally different now. Now here I am, 240 pounds, I'm strong as a bull. You understand. I said, Rosalind, you whipped the fire. You beat me down to the ground. I was too ashamed to go back to school. She whipped the fire out of me. She beat me like a dog. Let me tell you these quick ones. Thomas Diggs. Never forget. 
He became a police officer. He beat me so that he had me on the ground when I would look this way. He would go, pow! Ah! When I go that way. And I knew the word was going to spread. He whipped the fire out of me. Every fight I've lost, I've started it. And so one day I'm at the electric company, Duke Energy. And there I hadn't seen this man. And come on. And here this man, I said, my friend, I know you. Do I not? I introduced myself. I said, my name is Thomas Dix. I saw oh, Thomas, how are you doing, man? Ah, oh, we embraced. I said, Thomas, I've never forgotten the whipping you put on me. He said, oh, man. Here I was, I remember, 225 pounds, 34-inch waist. I had 18-inch arms, and I knew I was big. Proportion, well, I he said, no, man, I did I said, yeah, you whipped the fire to me, man. You beat me. Come on, you think that I would approach him with some child mentality to regress that matter? And the one that shall not put the fire on me, he had the same name of a country and western singer. His name was Charlie Pride. And Charlie Pride didn't mess with nobody. And I jumped him one day. And for that, he stomped me well. I didn't want to go to school that Monday. Everybody knew he had beat the fire to me. And from that day, I never started a fight. We're in a fight that you haven't started, but Yah has started. And he's going to bring us through, and I like that. We're going to win, Gisra Yah. But there's one aspect about us we got to get over. I want to read this to you, all right? In the same writing of this book, he says, uh, Yeah, he used the possessive. He says, my people. Uh, he used the words FL. He said, my people are foolish. They are flat out fools. They are stupid. They have no knowledge of wisdom. That's what a fool is. And there's a reason. A fool has no knowledge of wisdom. But he says, my people, uh, they are as hell. Uh, they despise the profoundness uh, of the wisdom of Yah. They don't want to be instructed. They want no one to teach them. And he tells us why. He said, they have not known Yada me. They have not experienced me in their walk. They have not experienced me in the Torah. They have not gotten a defined definition of who I am. He said they don't yada. They don't know me. They have not experienced me. He says the reason why? Because they are sacha. He said they're satish. What a statement. He said, they're damn fools, they're empty, and they are silly as hell. Like a damn silly woman and a silly man that tries to elevate himself to talk on matters that he has no cognitive knowledge, nothing but his words, uh, and he cannot back it up with Torah. He said, they are sakhal, they are actually... Damn silly as hell. They're stupid. And the reason they're stupid, this is vital. I want you all to remember this. He, say, he says they have no understanding. We are people that have no understanding. The bean. What are you saying? You use those fancy Hebrew words. They're not fancy. I use them to illustrate and to define the very mind of Yah. And the definitive of his words. He said they have no being. We think that understanding because we understand how to add one plus one equals two. He is simply saying they have no power, no ability to discern. They have no discernment at all. Not this damn holotry mess and witchcraft. You learn from the church of God and Christ and the Baptist whole house. I see something, I see. You don't see a damn thing. 
Yapata popo, yabaka pum pum ba ba bam. I shall, my friend. I just discerned something. You didn't discern a damn thing. When a man discerns something, he set in order only one way, my chut, by Torah. He takes the one to the Torah and show them the descriptive of that spirit. You understand? You can talk all you want to. I will show you in this teaching. Man, I discern they ain't right. You discern that you're not right. Your heart is not right, you wicked man, you childish woman. That's just something I discern about them. I, something I don't feel right because uh, of all that damn peanut butter you ate last night uh, and the beef ribs and that pork rib you had in there as well. You're going to either love me or you're going to despise me. I give you no middle grounds. That's why I don't agree with you to disagree. Hell no, I disagree with you. You're wrong. How about that? They have no discernment, none whatsoever. They have no ability to discern, to, di to know. They don't even know what is of Yah. They can't even discern the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said they have no. When Yah uses the word in all, as I will watch Raphael say to Syria, Sephora, she will say, say to them, I said, no. You understand that? And yet her no is not a no. Because through the process of that, she will relent and do what they even inquired or asked. She says to them, Riyak doesn't know how to say no to you. I will say no. And yet there is... Uh, there are stipulations and there is a, uh, there's a door opening uh, for them. When Yah says lo, when he uses the word no, it is lo, L-O. He says there's absolutely no chance that it can be. It can never be. When he says it cannot, when he says lo, he means that. He said they have no, none, zilch, without even the possibility they have no understanding, but yet we talk as though. But we have the understanding of this testimony that will be a light. We will have a ma'or. And when a man doesn't rejoice, doesn't know how to rejoice, uh, let everything that have breath praise you. Hallelujah. Dolomite Street, you can see it in his countenance. Uh, he, he emanates that. His walk emanates that. His stride emanates that. Uh, because he's a man of physicality. He's an ish. He's not a boy. They have no understanding. None whatsoever. Yah says, uh, they are very wise to do ra, to do evil. To speak against things they know not of. To talk on subjects and matters they have no in-depth richness of. Listen, when I come before you, I'm always prepared. I don't care what I talk on, and you all know I will keep to the Pacific. And everything I deal with is one Pacific. Not a matrium of myriads of different Pacifics, just one. That you may get wisdom out of what I am teaching. You understand? They're wise to do evil. They're wise to be conniving and conceited. That's what we must shoot. Turn from Ara to Aba, a wicked way. They're wise to do evil, uh, but he said, but to do right? Not Yasha, but he uses the word Yatab. 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 Can I define that? Not by my definition. He said they, but to do right. Can I tell you what that means? Will you believe me? You will? All right. He said, but they have no yatam. They don't even have the yatam. They don't even have the ability to rejoice and to be joyful in light of Torah. When a woman or a man is joyful, you see it on the countenance. That's what, that's why we need mental labor, my Ima. So we can understand. 
people will utilize that word when it says they have no knowledge to do, they can't to, but to do right. They will say, what, is, what does the word right mean? Well, you know, do right. You know, do right. Well, what? you're not telling me anything because you said it's to do right. Well, what does that imply? Well, well you know, I, I mean, you know, to do right. You know, you know what is right to do. Well, what is right to do? That's how they would explain it. So we need to search out the intricates of Torah. And we need men to just labor on one thing. We want to be abreast of everything. I said to all some of y'all, I don't want to know how to do everything. I don't want to know everything in this book. But what I do know, I'm a student. And I've learned with great preciseness uh, of that matter. That I can produce material to bring about revelation to the nation of Israel. Yeah. And you do it one way, and you do it one way, and you do it one way, and you do it one way. But it is of substance. But to do your job, to know how to rejoice, to be joyful in the Torah of Yah. He says they have no. That's what it says. They have no, none, whatsoever. They have no knowledge. His da'at no his yada. When a man has knowledge, when he has the yada of Yah, when he has that knowledge of experience, when his man has labored in the Torah, y'all said they don't even have that. They have no experience with me. They have no zikro, no memorial. They have nothing to call upon. But the juvenile instinct of interpretation, they can only be interpreted by this. And so you find the people today uh, chattering and talking about things uh, and it doesn't produce, if you're talking to, uh, I'll read, I'm going to teach on that. What a wise man, when one listens to a wise man, how wise did he become? And when a man is wise, everybody knows that that man is wise. When a woman has the beauty of Yah, everyone will know it. When she has the beautiful Ra'ach, everyone will know. When you have a funky, funky spirit, everybody knows it. When you're a vile, cruddy man, everybody knows it. You can examine yourself by children. There's one thing that children will let you know. I said to my Rafi, I said, the fruit bunnies are coming. I could hear them. And so they come into the house, and the Sephora says to me, and the way she said it was so beautiful, she says, Shalom, Reak, how are you doing? Ah, you see why I can't say no? And I said, Yahweh, why are we as the adultish? She was happy to see me. Why can't we do that? You can see the, my, oh, the little light in her face. She says, smell my face. It smells like coconut. And it was greased as a fat hog's belly, too. Smell it. I smell like coconut. I said, yes, you do, little girl. Coconut. We must taste. And see our ayan are open, our ozen our eyes, and see how tough this Torah of Yah is. And once we understand that, we can appreciate this time that we are in. Our Zachin tried to revive us yesterday that we understand the beauty of this time with the singing, the testimony of Omar Yah Daivi that he read to us, the testimony of strength. And what I want to do today is somewhat. Show us, even in those testimonies, the value of that. If there is something that is a value of purpose, and it has an appeasing or luring in your eyes, you will put back nickels and dimes to get it, would you not? That's why we must shoot. We must turn around. We must put away everything that prevent us, that circumvent us from grasping. <clears throat> And laying hold to the riches of this Torah. That's why we must impel, we must destroy, we must kill the immaturity uh, and this premature activity uh, that rises up in our minds. We must impel all the lust of our flesh and of the Ruach and begun to perfect the set apartness of Yah and the Ruach of 
Kadosh in fear. We must do that. Before I proceed, I want to define one word in the Hebraic definitive. I want to define it like it is expressed. Not in my expression, but how the linguist, how it was defined by the order of Yasman. He is the perfect linguist, isn't it? He's the one, a linguist is one that creates grammar or words uh, that are associated with an idea or a thing uh, to produce a picture in the mind uh, whether it's before you or not. So the words are associated with to give us an understanding of the dynamics uh, of that one thing. So who can do that better than you? The word by. B U Y. It is kana. There's a reason I'm teaching this. Because there is nothing that could have purchased. Is that too cold for you? Up? There is nothing that is so profound than Almighty Yah as Yoshua HaMashiach on that stake that he purchased one as vile as me and as corrupt as me from the depths of darkness and hell, uh, from a mind that was set apart from him. And yet there was a price paid. And if you think you're going to get by, you are a damn fool. He used the word by. We think we know, but we don't know. I want to define that. In its pristine language, the Torah. To buy or kana, it is to, it is of acquiring knowledge, wisdom. Not only that, it is to recover. It is to redeem. When you buy something, you redeem it. When you buy something, you get it. You buy something, you acquire it. Also, it is the power to create, to buy, and possess. Either we are the precious, the peculiar, the segula possession of Yah, or we are a pack of damn heathens, Gentiles, go in, a nation. Whose heart is far from Yah. Either we are his. And he's going to perform. The necessary requirements. To buy us. Or the dam of Yahshua. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I said that boldly and that bluntly. Where you're cursing him. You have impelled him. A new and a fresh. In our defiance of our sins, our willingness to do things that we know that the Torah commands us not to do it. As he tells us to be kindly affectionate one unto another, how kind are you? You may think you're kind, but you're not kind. You're not affectionate. You can sense affection in one's eyes. That little child, there's more than I can see the affection, although she doesn't know what affection is. Uh, it is just an innate, inborn characteristics uh, that he put in babies uh, that have no power to develop uh, outside of the exterior of what is taught to them. Damn this wicked world. You can't see why they don't like me. You see, they love me one moment, and then they don't love me. I'm all right with that. They say they stand with me, and I look. Where did he go? Where, where is she? I'm all right. I'm a wayfaring man. You don't understand that. Can I teach you? I want to begin in the book of Gilyana, book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to move uh, somewhat at a pace. Restarting the Brit Hadassah, the renewed covenant. We're not talking about when one, the Torah is explicit. When one goes to buy food or grain or substance for that, for the necessary physical, physiological need, the Torah uses the word Shabbat. 
S H A W B A R, Ushoba. It implies to buy grain food substance uh, for one's need. When Yah uses the words kana, it is to create within that purchaser. An example? One buys flowers or certain things, uh, and in their mind they're creating the, the, the bouquet that they're going to create. Uh, and that's what Yah has done uh, in his purchase possession. Yoshua speaks thus profoundly as he speaks unto the gathering of the Laodiceans here in Gilead, Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. He uses the word Musa. He said, I counsel. The word Musa is that I rebuke you, I reprove you, I instruct you, I teach you discipline. He said, I counsel of you uh, to buy. I want you to kana, to acquire. I want you to ascertain, uh, to buy of me gold, uh, tried, uh, purified. Uh, Sarah has been tested, has endured, and the impurities uh, have been purged out. I want you to buy me gold, tried in the fire, that you may be a sheer. You may be rich in the knowledge of Yah. You may be rich in the substance of Yah. You may be rich in the understanding of the Torah of Yah. He says, uh, and I want your garment, I want you to buy the garment of Laban. White, pure, raiment. Your kelly, your clothing, your mind is clothed. Your body is good about the truth. Your feet are, are covered and they're prepared. There's a, a, an assurance of the helmet, uh, the salvation. Your shach of Yah. You got truth girded or, or girt your loins, Yisrael. You have on a plate, a breastplate that is so spartan, it sparkles, and it is based upon the principles of the mitzvah of Yah, a breastplate of sadiq. Well, I'm going to make it plain. You can hide under you That you may be rich and your garments, you may be clothed with the Sadiq of Yah. That you may be clothed. For what reason, Yah? That the shame of your nakedness do not appear. What is that implying? It is one thing from the ayin. The ayin represents the physical eyes. And it represents the, 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 the ruach of a man, the insight that you look in his eyes. It represents the knowledge of his ability not only to understand spiritual things, but to understand natural things as well. That he can, he can draw the correlation between the two, Yisra'ya. He said that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And then he tells us to anoint our eyes with eyesalve. Why? That we may be able to see. That we may be able to discern. We may be able to discern Yoshua's body. Our Zohin Rabbi read to us during Pesach. That they have not discerned the body of Yoshua HaMashiach. You have not discerned those out of Yisrael. You don't even know them. You can't even see them. Because you have been blinded by your own blindness of your sins. Uh, and you have tried to sow the word of Yah among thorns of your damn wicked heart. Uh, and you think you would understand you are a damn fool, man. Uh, I'm talking to the men of Yehuda uh, and those that dwell in the city of Yerushalayim. Uh, and the city where Shalom is taught. Uh, let the men stand uh, at the Shaha, the gate uh, of Yah. Let the power of the testimony of your shoes stand at the gate of your mind, man. Uh, not your damn stupidity. Your immaturity. I don't care if you don't like me, man. A man will love me, but a boy will not. He said, I counsel. I'm Musa. I rebuke you to buy me. The word Musa. I discipline you to buy me gold. The riches. That are proven. Yah's going to prove this nation. He's going to prove this remnant. And they're going to come through as pure gold, just a remnant, a shebet, a ball here, just a small little bit. Not going to be many, just a few. If I didn't believe this, there's no way I would live the way I live. I could play the masses of the people. It's easy to play people. I said like that, I could play people. 
I can play the silly, super-minded women there. It will not be a task for me. That's a fact. Here you see, We're instructed by the Hamashiach to bathe him. This precious imona, this substance that has been tried. He is the Torah of Yah, isn't he? That's why every Jiram song that we sing must honor our Abba. And the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. And as he brought them out as that Pesach, my Zachin, when they went to the Bimit bar, they began to sing the song. And there's a line to the song they began to sing. It's found here in the book of Devarim, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 6. They began to sing of the beauty of Yah's character, how he orchestrated himself among them. Uh, and the power of his might. And how they had even corrupted themselves. Dibarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and one verse, verse 6. This is what they were singing. Are these the things you return to Yah? Do we return to Yah? This vile nature and the offerings that our hands are filled with sin and wickedness, corruption, malice of heart. Is that what we return to Yah? So this is what the song says. Is this what you have to read the first five verses to understand what they were doing? Is this what things you do to return to Yah? Oh, Nabal, he called them foolish. We are foolish. He said, oh, senseless Foes without integrity of Torah. Is this what you return unto Yadi Barim 32 6? He says, O foolish people and unwise. Are we the people of Yah? We are an unwise people. We are only wise in our own conceited ways. He called us Nabal. We are senseless. We are silly. We are stupid and we are unwise. It's not. This is the part I like. Although he expressed who I am there, he expressed who he is in the next line. Is not he your Abba that has bought? He is the one that has uh, have He has purchased us. Is he not the one that has purchased you? Is he not the one that has bought you? Is he not the one that has made you and established you? Is it not Yah? Is he not the one that has bought us? How Yah? Um, that's why he commands us to remember him as a king. To remember the Pesach, the passing over, the Passover. He tells us to remember it and to teach it to our children throughout all of our generations. When the children shall ask the question, what means this Zachin Yerameya? Then he reads the story to them. And to see how we were Chava, we were bought. We were purchased by Yah. When we could not buy, he bought us. He is the one, Yisrael, that has uh, Kana. He has redeemed us. He has bought us. Are you not the one that has bought us? And has established us. Well, what price did he pay to buy us? The Pesach, what, do you understand the price of that? I will give us a little insight. And the one who spoke of this utterance, his name is Shaul. And he speaks to us by way of First Corinthians. Yeah, First Corinthians. First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and one verse. I want you to hear this. Hear the expressions. What he says here. He says for you, Yisraya, for you are bought. You are the ones that have been acquired 
the possessions of Yah, you have been bought with a miknah. Do you understand that? The word miknah is to gain by purchase. You have been bought. You have been bought, Yisra'ya, with a price. Yeshua paid it all. All to him I Oh, he paid the price that not the milach of the kingdom could pay. Not I, not you. He said you have been bought with a mikha. You have been purchased by a price that is beyond your ability to comprehend the depth of that price. That's why when the power of the testament of Yahshua resonates in us, we will understand the great price what he has laid down for, for a wretched damn people that are wicked and vile and have nothing to offer. And he only asks one thing for us to offer him. Hallelujah. Only one damn thing. We give it all, Yisrael, yeah, we will come before his presence with Toda. When we awake, we will cry, Toda, Toda, Ya, Wo, Toda, Toda, Ya, Wo, Toda, Toda, Ya, We, One more day, Wo, Toda, Ya, We, Toda, Ya, We, I want to brought you, yeah, for the Shabbat day, we are the body of Yeshua Hamashiach. You have been born with a price. We have been Kana, we have been acquired, purchased, we have been redeemed with a price. We've been redeemed with a mikah, a special price, Yisrael. Your damn gold and your silver is not going to redeem you. Jehu spoke on the same breath as Moshe writes in Dibarim. You've been bought with the price. He said, therefore magnify and honor Yah in your body. Don't tell me we are honoring Yah in our bodies. Uh, in our minds when we look down, look like a broken down piece of wickedness. Uh, when our countenance looks so damn stupid uh, and crazy. There is no beauty, Yah, uh, of the expression of the Esha. The Esha, the riches of Esha, E-S-H-E-R. The Esha, not the Oshia. The Esha is the resounding. Uh, it defines that we have the Ruach of happiness. We're happy. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I am, I am, I am free. Oh, yeah, come on. You can bounce shola trivial knowledge off others, but you don't bounce it off me. You can bounce your boyish understanding of things with other boys. You're coming to a man here. And that's a fact. For we should honor Chabod Yah in our body. Not only in our body, but our Ruach. The Ruach of Yah, he, the, he is Ruach, isn't he? And that's life, isn't it? So our Ruach ought to bring life to Yisrael. Yeah, that's what the Ruach of Yahshua, it brings life to us. So when we embrace each other, we see each other. It calls life when you're down just to see my Aka. It calls life uh, to, to, to feel my mind and my all the rejoicing. Because I see the light of his testimony, Yahshua. And my precious young Ark that submits uh, unto the ways of the Torah. We see a damn callous people today, don't we? They're hard. They look hard. They look mean as hell. I'm not going to subjugate myself to that. Not me. He paid a price. We've been bought with a price. We've been purchased with a price. Hallelujah. He has shown his michna, this price. Therefore, we shall honor Yah in our bodies, in our ruach. Which is, we belong to Almighty Yah. We are His. We belong to Him. And the only way we're going to understand the beauty of this Yisra, Yah, there's a process. When Yah commands us to study, the word is lachag. Lachag. It doesn't mean read. It doesn't mean just read the Torah. It means this. 
I would rather read one verse, one katuf, a Torah. The word lahach means this, to meditate, to ponder, to allow the resolve of that to, 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 to be meshed into the fiber and the fabric of your life. And what a man says he wants that studied the Torah, you will see the fiber of those things that he has meditated on. He meditated day and night. That's all that he did. Day and night he meditated upon that one verse. And that the clarity of that may be resolved in his mind that he could teach the young men or the young daughters uh, the, the very value of that. I can't stand to see ignorant men try to talk on things uh, and they just talk from an ignorance of their own understanding of that. Uh, and they are dumb. They are folks that are dumb. Period. But a wise man speaks. Even the fool will get quiet. When a wise man speaks, he speaks out of the balance of wisdom and knowledge, understanding of Yah. You hear what he says? I want to show us how to get there. Can I show us? Will you believe me? Yeah. We have been bought with a price. There is the michna we have been gained. We have been become the possession of Yah by a purchase. We have become the possession of Yah by a purchase. That's why you hear these people today. Uh, well, no man can buy or sell. Listen, Yisrael, yeah, that is Kana in Revelation. They can't buy sir, because they cannot redeem themselves. Uh, there is no way you're going to redeem yourself. Uh, it is this precious price uh, that has redeemed us. Uh, there's no way you're going to be able to redeem yourself. There's no way you're going to sell yourself uh, unto one that can redeem you. Uh, you have to bow down to the spirit of this age and give yourself your mind over. What are they going to put chips in? Your woman called me the other day. I said, that's a damn lie. That's silly. I said, you, I said if Kinley Hay is saying that, you know it's wrong. If Benny Hinn is saying that, you know it's wrong. If T.D. Jakes is talking about putting chips in you, you better run them from that. The liars. You better listen to this man that will tell you the truth. Hallelujah. And so you hear everybody saying, and they think, oh, brother, you know, they're going to put them chips in. You know, they got them chips and all that. You're just a reservoir of what is, that, that, the scripture doesn't say that. Can I say this before I proceed? If all the infrastructure is going to be destroyed, I showed my issue a little clip this morning. I was sitting there reading a little bit. I don't read much news. And you all heard about that chemical plant that caught fire, that fertilizer plant, there, where was that, Alabama? Texas, yes, I'm sorry, Texas. And there was a man and his child. They were about as far, I'm telling you, Yisrael, yeah, from our house to the highway from that. You could tell it was a distant, you can tell he was not right upon it. And he's talking to his little child, he said, look at that, look at that. And that an explosion would all whoo, right in line with him and that child. And the first thing out of her mouth, she said, oh, daddy, I can't hear, I can't hear. Get me out of here, please, get me out of here. Get me out of here, get me out of here, daddy. He said, oh, man, what the hell? That's, he was talking like that then. It was like a three, four point megaton bomb. And that's, they were in the straight line of that fire. And when that, my issue, like, ooh. I don't know if the child is permanent. The hearing of the child is destroyed. She said, I can't hear you, Dad. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, please get me out of here. That's what she was saying. Get me out of here. Please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. Please, please, Daddy. I had to look at that twice, man, to see the power of that blaze. It just shot <laughs> like a fire. I'm telling you the truth. These, these were fertilizer, nitrogen. Nothing like the wrath of Yah. I'm going to proceed. I want to show us how we get to this place. And there are things that we must buy. And if there's any man that could, can instruct us and teach us in that, that's Shilomo, isn't he? Yeah. All right, let's visit Mishli, Proverbs chapter five, 4, verse 5, Mishli. This is the only power of our redemptive strength unto Yah. We got to have knowledge of who he is. We must. And the only way we're going to get that, we must buy it. It says in Mishli, chapter 4, verse 5, uh, it uses the word get. That word is kana, buy, acquire. That's what that is. In the Hebraic, in this sentence structure here, it is to buy. This is the verb. It says get. I want you to get hukmah, wisdom. What is the wisdom of God? It is the power to be shrewd. 
It is the power of understanding and knowledge how to fight in the spiritual battle that we are in. That's the wisdom of Yah. Not because you can quote a scripture. Not because you know a few verses. The hukma. It is the shrewdness of Yah's wisdom to prepare for the military battle. And our conclave where we rest in the assurance is in the testimony of Yahshua. He used the word get, doesn't he? If you go to the store, you're going to what? Get something. You're going to get. So he tells us to buy. I want you to chana. I want you to redeem. Get wisdom. I want you to be skilled in the spiritual battles. He said, I want you to buy Kana understanding. I want you to buy Bino. I want you to buy the ability to discern. We're going to need that in the battle of this age. When no man can buy or sell, no man can redeem himself from the very power of the destruction that is coming upon the earth. Unless they receive the mind of the beast and that mind of Nahash, it is one mind to fight against Yah. And if we destroy him, destroy the testimony of Yahshua, we will be all right. You are a damn fool, man. You are a damn fool, woman. So we must get wisdom, we must get understanding, we must get this ability to discern. We must discern the fallacy in the Akka. We must discern the fallacy in the Ahot. In my days as a young boy, you will see the old mother say, you're full of it. Full of what, mama? Girl, you know what I mean, go on out of here. Am I right back there, Ima? They could discern, could they not? They knew when you were false. They knew when you were not real. We can't discern a damn thing. She's a number of hypocrite. They knew. We can't discern a lie. They can discern when the child told them a lie. They can discern when you told them a lie. We can't even discern the spirit of a lie. They can discern when that one was a fool, when that one was wise. It's amazing what I recall as a young boy. I recall all these things. Do I vividly remember the sequential order of those things? No. But I remember the words that were spoken because Yah, as a young boy, he had his hands on me. He knew I wouldn't sell him out for a pair of alligator shoes. He knew I wouldn't sell him out for a Mercedes Benz. Damn a Mercedes Benz. He knew that for a fistful of dollars. He knew I would not be a man of nitta uncleanliness. Not by any might or power of mine. He says, you need to buy all of this and look at the lot of it. He says, uh, and forget it not. We do not need to forget it. He said, neither decline from the words of my mouth. He said, don't allow your heart to be removed from the words that I've spoken unto you. The wisdom that comes from Almighty Yah. And we, we decline from that, don't we? We decline because we can see that this time, come on, there should be a ma'o, a rejoicing of the greatness uh, of the knowledge that knowing that we have been purchased. Uh, we have been purchased by a possession uh, of Almighty Yahweh, by the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. He commands us. He said, don't let my words uh, decline from your faith. Verse 6, he says, Azab. He says, forsake her not. Don't let her decline from your actions. Don't depart from wise counselor. And she shall, uh, she shall preserve you. She shall shiva. She shall watch over you. She shall hedge about you. This was hedge us. It's the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of Yah. That's what hedge us about. That's what formed the barringer around us. He said, for she shall shiva preserve you. And he commands us to love her. How many people love Yah's correction? I will show you that's what it means now. How many people love for Yah to speak to them? How many people love the wisdom of Yah? How many people love the understanding of Yah? How many of us love what he said to us out of Yeremiah when he said his people are sottish? How many love that? How many think that they are not sottish, stupid? How many think that they are not FL or damn fool? We don't love that. Don't make me move, my friend, all right? I want to teach this. It's hard for me to do that. He said, you must love her and she shall keep you. When you love wisdom, wisdom will guard you. 
it will show my, most men don't love wisdom because they want to show you that they're wise. When you love wisdom, my young, it will preserve you. It will preserve your wife, your babies, the one in the womb. These are damn fools today. They can't even teach you. That's why y'all, I read, you men of Yahuda, we as men, we don't even know how to instruct. Our lives are not worth a damn. You can make yourself think that you possess something. Our lives are not worth a damn. We live mediocre. To the ya, to the ya, for the dam. I'm so glad I came. To the ya, to the ya, for the dam. Ya, shuha, do da ya, do da ya, for the dam of ya, shuha. It is the power to cleanse and wash me in. To die, no 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 die, but as long as I can say that to the Yah for the Dhamma Yonshua. That's all right. So it's not of any value of myself uh, that I can constitute my worth. Uh, it is the price that has been paid that I've been born with. Hallelujah! 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 We don't forsake the wisdom of God. This is what keeps us. That's why we must buy it. We must allow the wiseness of his mind to redeem us. We must allow his discernment to redeem us. To show us our state of our minds and where we are. And we grow up. He says to us here in verse 7, wisdom to hukma. The skill nature of a great Kaaba, a warrior, wisdom, it is the primary, it is the principal thing. He said, therefore, now you get, he said, therefore, he says, buy. He says, skana, allow it to redeem you, to get what you need, the requirements of wisdom, to purchase by wisdom. And he says, in all your buying, in all your getting, that word buying or your getting, get. Those two words, get and get, uh, it is kana. He said, all oh, your redeeming, uh, he said, all oh, your buying, get understanding, get the ability to discern, get the ability to know an ark, get the ability to know a true brother, a true ahot. Uh, everyone is not a true brother. Everyone is not a true ahot. They were among us, but they were not of us. She is among us, he is among us, but they are not of us. You understand, everyone is not sincere. That's what we must, all of our buying, and all of our buying, let's buy wisdom, let us buy understanding. We need the wisdom to experience with you. We need this uh, experience that we have purchased uh, from Almighty Yah. How do we purchase that? By the trying of our imuna, by the experience that we have with Yah, that we know that the wisdom of this matter, you know how the old people could understand such thing, uh, our ancestors, our forefathers, uh, because that was passed on down uh, from the mother to the mother to the mother to the mother. She would sit and watch mama. She would watch her actions, her ways, and she knew what she was saying. Uh, that one thing, not right, baby doll. Don't go near them now. Get one on it. Get young again. Get young again. They knew. The young man would sit in the company of the elders uh, and shut their mouths and watch and they would be quiet and they did not interject their little foray of stupidity into the conversation. We got stupid men today. A man that is wise, he looks wise. You can't tell a rich, you, you can tell when a man is rich. I tell you all the stories, this is about 25 years ago, her brother took us out to this family, he was performing at this place and he took us out to dinner. We didn't go to him play he wanted us to play. And I remember this about thirty about thirty years ago. Twenty five about thirty years ago. I had on a teal colored necktie with a gray suit. I don't know what I had on. Gray socks and some wingtip shoes. And this man he he looks at me. He looks at me like this. You could tell he was wealthy. You could tell this woman was wealthy too. She didn't have no gawky stuff but what she had on you doing was right. I knew he had on a pair of black alligator shoes. He had on probably about a two thousand dollar cashmere coat. I knew what it was. Wow. So he looks at me, he says, just like that. I like that necktie, man. 
in so much vigilant immaturity. I said, this? I said, I didn't pay for six dollars for it. And, and the man just ignited. He said, I didn't ask you what you paid for it. I don't care what you pay. I knew he had money. That's all. This man got money. He said, I like that necktie. I like that. That right there. Sir. You knew he had money. You could tell by his complexion, the complexion of the woman he had, whether it was Botox in those days or not. You knew he had money. So we that are wealthy in the knowledge of Yah, we give the wealth. We share the wealth. Now, my wealth doesn't expose you. It exposes us as a people and a nation. You understand? So in all of our gathering, we must get understanding. Well, how do I get understanding? Who knows? I don't want you to answer. I'll answer. i ask question rhetorically. Who, who knows how to get understanding? Can I tell you? Well, y'all's going to let me read in the book. He's going to talk down to me. And I'm going to get understanding of everything. You're a damn fool. But I saw you got it. You just read the Torah and you get understanding of everything. You silly boy. So you tell me that that little child is going to read a book and he's going to understand it of life. It's by pattern. It's by the Tazmuth, by example, what he sees and what words are spoken in his ears. You can never understand the power and the dynamics of Yah's imuna, his faith, but by hearing. You can read all you want to, it doesn't produce anything. My strength comes when I stand here without any type of prepared way of process. I began to love the Ruach to open up. And when I hear men like these, Aka, you think that it doesn't reward me greatly? Sure it does. Now, Zachin took the service that way yesterday because we were supposed to have taught on beyond the Yordan. And so here it is at the last minute. I say, I, I'm not saying anything. You do what you want to do, Aka. Sometimes, any way you want to do it, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't care. You know, that's you. Matter of fact, I didn't even want to put, I, I wanted to just keep on what I had on. That's, until Rafael said, well, you keep on what you want to. I'm going to fix myself. I said, I don't want to take no bath. I'm just going over there. That's right, mama. So how do we think we're going to get this wisdom and knowledge? How do we think we're going to get it? By reading? Can I show you, will you believe me if I show you out of the book? Not my opinion, not my judgment. If I show you what it says in the book, will you believe me? Okay, well, I will show you then. How about that? In the 15th chapter of the book of Mishli, <clears throat> hallelujah, I'll show you how we get it. In the 15th chapter, in verse 32, the answer is here. Proverbs 15.32. Proverbs 15.32. This is your answer. It says, he that... Para that rejects or negate, he that refuses uh, Musa. What is instruction, the discipline, the counsel, the correction of Yah? He that refuses instruction, he despises, he hates, uh, he has disdain, he ma'as, he despises his own nefesh. He hates his own life. We don't like for no one to instruct us. You've been on a job and they tell you something, you get upset? Talk to me. Oh, all right. The only one that has been in that position. I have two, mama. You've been on a job, they say something. Well, man, come on, you go to my you say, God, we get God, we get God, we get God. You get pissed off, you know it's right to do. That's how silly we are. So anytime you despise instructions, here you got a wife, you got children at home that need their little money, and you acting like a jackass, getting mad because he said, instead of doing that over there, you do this over here, and you got mad? You got silly on that? And we that have worked in the environment, we all, we all are guilty of this one. So I break it down to our own life scenario, okay? Yeah. You get mad about nothing because you despise, and if you don't love you, how can you love me? You don't care for you, how can you care for me? Yeah. What a man despises, uh, the Musa of Yah, he hates, uh, he despises his own nefesh. He mars, uh, he has disdain for him. Uh, he doesn't order love a damn thing. Yet you go to teach me? Nah. I want to hear. I hear. 
I hear what my Isha says. She doesn't rebuke me. I would never allow her to do that. She's my help me, but I hear her. Sure I do. I just don't uh, calculate it like her and respond maybe the way she does. To the wise man, all things are pure. They are tachor, they're clean, and they are of great purpose. But to a man that is defiled, check our countenance there. A man that is defiled and unbelieving, there is nothing that is pure. Nothing that is pure. He doesn't believe a damn thing. But a wise man, he hears, and he becomes wiser. That's what he does. He hears, he shemach. What is the first commandment? Shemach ol Yisra'ya yachichatz. He ol Yisra'ya. For Yazikat. Mishli 1532, he that refuse instructions despise his own nephesh. Is y'all liar? And we despise instruction. We despise Musa, don't we? We don't want nobody telling us nothing. You work with the fool, the first thing he presents in the morning, she, their madness. They know what they're supposed to do and they're mad about that. You work with anyone like that, that's a damn fool. That's a stupid man. That's a fool of a woman. Because they hate themselves that much. They hate themselves. They despise their own nephew. But he that reproves, he that shemak, does it say he that hears? He that hears reproof gets what? Gets an understanding lev. He buys, gets, he buys an understanding laba. That's how you get understanding, Yisra'ya. You sit down and chit chat, and your words doesn't even strike a chord in another's heart. You're not giving them a damn thing. When I talk, I want the fear of y'all to resonate in you. We worked hard that day, didn't we, my show? We're no talking about no shooting until we got in the truck then. We both wore out, man. I didn't say to him, move faster, man. He said to me, come on, preacher, let's roll, let's roll now. No, sir, we, we roll today, man. And I'm going out. And Oxy Simeon, after we did all that, he come with Rayak. I did that. I, I want to show. I said, Simeon, get out of here, man. Go, go on now. I don't want to hear that now, man. And he, he, he Simeon, you know, okay, and uh, we, we got that done. And, and he's back. And, and I said, Simeon, if you don't get out of here, man. I did the same thing. Him like I said, get out of my office. Get out, man. He said, you mean? I said, yeah, I mean to get out now. I mean what I said. Get out. He said, all right, preach, all right. Precious one for the price of his blood, pay for you with it. Brahak ya for your pop, 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 pa, hallelujah. For it's the same blood that bought him as well as you to the ya for your precious papa to the ya for the price of the blood for him. Listen, little girl, give your ema a big hug and kiss. Hallelujah. Give your ema a hug and a precious kiss for the same dumb that purchased you little uh, one. The same blood that purchased he. I'm happy. Hell, you can, you can look like a damn fool all you want to. This is real with me. I'm genuine. Hallelujah, I'm genuine. I'm not phony. You can be phony. You see how we get understanding? And we hate that, don't we? We hate instructions. You say what you want to. That's what it says. We get understanding by hearing, by hearing reproof. The Musa. The correction. Your baby will not get understanding unless they hear you. That precious son of yours, he will not get understanding unless he hears you. And that's reproof. That's how we get understanding. That's how we get the ability to discern. He'll know, no, I can't do that. No, I don't do that because daddy will get me. And if you don't reprove them, you get no understanding. You get no power of discernment. 
You think you're going to get this sermon about reading the book? You're as silly as they come. You're silly, man. You're silly. You're immature. You don't even have the breath and the gravity and the understanding of what a real man is. You want some gather, some warriors, men that are ready to fight. You got to be ship shape and ready. I talked to this old man now, 80 some years old, he was moving better than me. Man said, Preacher, I had some old men I had, they were what, 70 years old? Both of them, he said, they worked better than you. Some old boy, country boys been on them farms all their lives, he said, they rolled too. Well, so if they could do it at 72, I would have made sure when I'm 72, he's 52, we can work together. How about that? To the young, for the big, big old ox, ya was a cock. To the young, for ya was a dog. I mean it, I mean it from my heart, my precious ox. Yes, I do. Oh, I mean it, ya was a dog. I truly mean that. I ya for your big strong thick back. So does she. Toraya for the back of Yawasada. Hallelujah. <laughs> he commands us to make a joyful noise unto him. I don't need no music. I got it in my heart. It's the truth. I'll just have it then. I don't know one song, but I know what to sing. Can I move, little father? Well, that doesn't substantiate anything, man. Well, look at the 19th chapter of Mishli. 19 verse 8, one verse. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 8. <clears throat> we have been bought, the Pesach, the offering for us. It says in Mishli, Proverbs chapter 19 verse 8. It says, for a man he that buys or he that he that acquires by buying and get the wisdom, the redeeming power of Yas Torah. He that gets a wise heart. You see that? He loves his own nephesh. When a man has a wise heart, he loves himself. He loves his own life. He loves who he is. He's a happy man. He, ex he exudes the shalom of Yah. He exudes the beauty of Yahshua HaMashiach. So the man got that. I'm talking to the men of Yehuda and Yerushalayim. And all 12 tribes dwell there in Yerushalayim. I'm talking to the men of Yehuda, all right? He that loves or he that gets, he that buys or he that gets a wise heart. And we see in verse 1532, tells us how to get a wise heart, right? It tells us how to get a wise heart. So he that gets a wise heart, he loves his own nephesh. He that keeps... Shema guard and preserve understanding shall find excellent things. He shall find tough. You find a man that gets understanding, he finds tough things. He has an excellent about his ruach. We must get there, Yisrael. We have to. You have to have strong men. You have to have what the Torah calls Geba, men that are strong, Torah wisdom. And there's a light that you know when you see them. There's a countenance and a light on that man that speaks to the volume of your trials, your struggles, and things of that nature. We must have men like that. And when they open their mouth, they open their mouths with wisdom. There's a soundness to their voice. There is a, is a reproof, a rebuke, a correction, but yet there's healing in their voices. Well, I'm going to heal us the day before I finish. I'm going to cut you open like you bust a watermelon. Bust you open. Fillet you and show us what we really have. We don't have what we think we have. You're deceiving your own self, your own heart to think you possess it. When a man loves reproof, he gets wisdom. A fool hates reproof. When a man loves that, uh, he gets a wise lab. I know it says lab, but it's the lab. He gets a wise mind. His countenance, what's in a man's mind, you see it in his expression. What's in a daughter's uh, to Zion's mind? You see it in an expression. When she's angry at everybody, don't you see that in an expression? When she gets up in the morning with a mood, have you ever said to your wife, what's wrong with you? I've been married 36 years, so I've said that over the course of 36 years. Uh, she have said to me, you all right this morning? Yeah, I'm all right. Well, you sure don't sound like it. You don't look like you're all right. 
And then you want to justify yourself. Well, I'm all right. I said I was all right. But you know you're not all right. You're just a damn liar. You're just a damn hypocrite, a phony. You know what I say, mama? I say, I'm just nutty as hell this morning. I say it like that. Nutty, baby. And what I say, then when I confess my fault, it's just, I, 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 how you doing? Come and give me a hug now, woman. I, I'm all right now. <laughs> give me a hug. Just be honest. I'm nutty. I learned that early on. I'm stupid as they come. I'm just nutty. I, I don't even feel like talking. Okay, I won't. Look at her. Hypocrite. Don't mess with me, woman. That's all right. He said that, hypocrite. See, I was a, talking with someone the other day. And they said, I hope you don't get offended at me. Uh, preacher. But can I say this? Well, if you're going to say something to fit me, you, you may be in trouble. He said, don't let this offend you. He said, but man, I want to tell you. See, when I say this, some of us get silly. He said, you've you got a beautiful wife. She's a precious daughter to son. She's pretty. So I've never even said that to her. Look at her. I don't tell everything. You talk. I don't talk all the time. And I start crying. I say, man, I'm gone. Bye. Bye. I ain't, I ain't talking no more. You may not think she's precious and pretty. He thought she was, so maybe there was some character about her that. But Sarah, I said, meet my Zachim better me to get the mail, and she runs out there. So she says to me, she said, Papa, you got a letter here. It had flowers on it. She says, is that for me? I said, no, that's my name on there, little girl. That ain't your letter. And there was an offering in there. And I said, okay, I know it's an offering. She said, is that for me, Papi? I said, get out of here. Here, you can have this. You can have that, that booklet. You can look in that one. That's your mama's, but you can have it. And sip it here, use some mail here. Oh, I got all this mail. And so Sarah, I said, that ain't for me. That letter ain't for me. She remembered those flowers on that letter. So when I bust the letter open, Sarah, I said, come on, man, don't. I know you're listening, man. Yeah, brah. So I said, this is for you, little girl. Come on. I'm going to give it to you. So with that little child, he, this ark found that to him, maybe not to us, she was pleasant. And she, she, when he was here, she was kind to him. And he talked to her. So although the old proverb, beauty is in the sight of the beholder, so what's wrong with that? She's pretty to me, mama. From day one, sneaking, looking out that window, I said, she didn't see me watching her. I'm just sitting there watching her. She on this big old Mexican hat with a black and gold like dashiki. I know what she had. I'm watching her. I'm going to marry that girl one day. I said, if ever get married, that's the woman. I wasn't marrying nobody else. You ought to marry me. No, I'm not marrying you. I'll be in trouble if I marry you. Oh, there you are. Can I move on? I want to finish you today, all right? So that's how we get understanding. But this is the mind of those that do not want. They think that the goal of their own frivolous wisdom is of great substance. Saul give us an example of that in, in Proverbs 16, 16. I want to move quickly because I want to finish, all right? It says in Proverbs 16, 16, um, Yah says this, Proverbs 16, 16. How much better? Is it it to kana, to acquire, to ascertain, to buy wisdom than gold? See these damn liars uh, telling you to buy gold and silver. These are dogs. These are flat out dogs. I don't care who they are. They are liars. Yeah. How much better it is to buy wisdom uh, to get kana. No man is going to be able to buy. I, I, I counsel of you. I rebuke you to buy on me gold, uh, gold tried in the fire. How much better is it to buy wisdom than the nuggets of your folly and your stupidity uh, than gold? He said, and also not only to buy uh, go, uh, the wisdom of Yah, but to buy understanding, uh, rather to choose silver. Are not these the things that are pushing in the commodity market? Buy gold, buy silver. It's not so, Yisra'ya. You buy wisdom. This is what's going to redeem you. In the midst of the great trials of hell, this is what's going to stabilize and guard you. This is what's going to keep your mind free from the radical forces of hell. The short them, you're going to need wisdom. 
You're going to need understanding. You're going to need strong men. And you're going to be in the company of those that love Yah and that they are strong. You're going to need that. You're going to need that, Yisra'el. Yeah. That's why we men, we that are the, of the house of Yisra'el, we must exercise ourselves on the imuna. And you need to get rid of your damn ways, man. Your stupidity. Yeah. Your damn stupid ways that produce nothing but a stupid look and an immature attitude. I'm a man. And I love men too. And I like old men too. I like old men. I like to hang with old men. I don't like young boys. I like old men. I have an infatuation with old men. They talk, oh, mommy, you know what I'm talking about then. The experiences, the experience in life teach me more than, than all of my learnings that I think I may ascertain through my own processing it through a little you for mine. That's why I used to say I always appreciated the elders. That's why when the elders sat in the market, and they debated Torah in the market so that the young minds could hear them. And they could hear that was Zachain Obadiah. He, he laid it out on Reak Davi. Ooh, you heard that. Ooh. And that thing was so precise and so clear. Today they want to sit in their little conclaves and want to talk scripture. And they don't know a damn thing. And so when they would see the wife of the Zachain walking through the market, uh, they would say, look at Zachain, Shimri boy, look, ah, oh, man, his woman, she represents the words of his mouth and the power of his mouth. Uh, that's why they sat in the market. That's why they were honored. Uh, and they would go to the market and they would sit and they would debate Torah. They would debate it. They would debate it. Say, you're wrong, young Ak. Oh, man, that's not what it says there. Yehuda Daya, read that from the Torah. Can't see if we can borrow that. Oh, see what it says? Ah. And the old man would relinquish and condescend and say, You're right. Not today. These old fools today, they get mad, they get upset, they get stupid. I will come on, man. Don't try to stop me. Hallelujah. It's better to God to buy Yisra'ya to Chana. That be your redemption power, not your money. Your gold is not going to redeem you. Your silver is not going to stand in the day of great affliction. It is the dumb on that, on that stake that has been shared. Uh, that has been a special price uh, for us. We've been born with the price. Uh, It is not your intellectualism or your knowledge of matter. It is what Yah has defined about the matter that you may understand. It is set and there's nothing you can add to it. Hallelujah. And can I show us another line of that song of Moshe? You want to hear it? I want you all to sing this song next, this song. All right. You all work this thing together in Shemoth, Exodus. Chapter 6, chapter 15, verse 16. Exodus 15, 16. We're dealing with the purchase possession of Yah now. He has purchased us. We are bought. He has by us. It says in Shemoth, Exodus 15, 16. As they sing of this great song of Yah's great hand of his deliverance. It says, Emma, the terror that causes one's heart to freeze. Exodus 15, 16. He said, terror and pachad, or dread. There was something that was before us that was so dreadful. Shall fall upon them, upon those of Edom. That's why we don't treat the Edomites. If you know who they are, you don't even treat them wrong. You do right about them because you said, dread and terror shall fall upon the enemies of Yeshua HaMashiach. Listen to this. He said, by the greatness, by the kato, by the power, by the greatness of your arm, Yeshua HaMashiach, shall they be as still as a stone. For what reason? Till, till, until your people pass over, oh yeah. Till the people pass over. What people passing over? Those you have purchase take nobody else going over he said the Edomites may rise up in the forces of hell that's what wisdom gives us the, the hukma gives us the skill to fight men today don't have the damn skill to fight 
He said, when Edom rises up, when the nature of Nahash rises up, he said, my people are going to come on, come on. What people? The ones that he has purchased. Silver and gold is not going to get you over, but the ones that he has purchased. To the ya, to the ya, for the dumb, yes you are. To the ya, to the ya, for the dumb, yes you are. To the ya, to the ya, for the dumb, yes you are. For the dumb have purchased me, hallelujah. Oh, the dumb of Yahshua purchased me. Oh, it has. The dumb of Yahshua has purchased me. So I brought it yeah, for the dumb of Yahshua. For we are the purchased possessions of Yah. And I read that last part again. He says... Uh, Till your people, till your people, till your am, your nation, till your people pass over. Oh, yeah, again, till your people pass over, which you have, Kana, you have purchased us. He has purchased us. That's why Pesach and Masvah, as we examine our heart, should be so important to us. This is the time of the new year, yeah. As the world say we make New Year's resolution, you need to begin to sow the righteous zira, the seed of Yah in your wicked heart. You need to begin to eat the peri, the fruit of the righteousness of Almighty Yah. You have eaten on your damn wicked mind and it's produced wickedness after wickedness every year. You have not progressed since you was 35 to you 55. You have not moved since you was 27 to you 37. You have not moved since you was 49 to you damn 70. You're still the same damn silly man. Immature woman, full of damn folly. I take nothing back. That's right, Emma Prison. I shall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until his purchase possession pass over. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. There are only those that are coming to the coming into the Mountain, the hair, the place of Yah. Whoever there shall be great shaha, the voice shall sing and ring. There's only one people. Can I identify them for? It? There's no one that could do it better than David. He says to us in Tehillim, Psalms 68, verse 54. Psalms 50, 50, 54. 78, 54. 78, Psalm 78, 54. It says, And he brought us. He brought them out of the borders of his Kodash place, even to this mountain, even to this high place. I'll read that again. Psalm 78, 54. He brought them to the borders, to the periphery of his Kadosh place. He says, even though you're not even worthy, I'm taking you to the high place. Where Hashatan desired to exalt himself, uh, I would exalt myself above the mountains of Yah. I would dwell uh, in the mountains of Yah, in the, in the high place of uh, He said he had brought us there. Who has he brought there? Which his right hand had purchased. He is the one that has purchased Yoshua HaMashiach. He has put us all in the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. He lost none except the son uh, of perdition. That's why we celebrate Yoshua. There is no power. The power came in in his death uh, at his burial and then the resurrection. Uh, if he had lived and died, he had lived and died as any other man. Uh, but the power was in his death burial. That's what y'all purchased him for. Uh, to die, to be buried, uh, and to get up. Uh, that he bring us on over. Hallelujah. Sing the song, how we got over, oh. how we got over, my nephews look back, and I wonder how I got over, how we got over, oh, I got over, I ain't gonna sing it that way, how I got over, 
Rumba, how I got a Rumba. Oh, my mind takes me back. God, I wonder how, how I got over my sins and my wickedness through the purchase mountain of Yahushua. Yeah, I'm going to sing a little bit today. Zarkane had a singing yesterday, so one. I have to make up my songs as I go. I can't, I can't think about no words to sing. I just sing what flows out of me. Hallelujah. His right hand. Yahshua is the right hand. Hallelujah. He is the young. He calls all men to receive a mark in their forehead in their right hand. He said, in this mountain, it's been purchased. Can't put no mark there. Can't put no mark there. Can't put no mark there. Hallelujah. We are the purchased possession of Almighty Young. He has brought us to the knowledge of Torah. He's brought us uh, to the understanding of his mitzvah. He's brought us to the understanding of his righteousness. Uh, Yisrael. Well, my trials, you don't understand. You're not going through nothing. Whoever we are is one thing. I'm so glad he's there. No, I can't. I'm not talking like we've heard in our Baptist whole houses and Methodists and Pentecost. I'm talking about what Torah says. Well, I don't believe that. Well, can, can I demonstrate by the voice of one of his messengers what he says? Well, okay, well, it says in Tehillim, Psalms 139, the book of Psalms. David says uh, here in Psalms 139, verse 13, he is always present with his people. In all of our ignorance, he's present. Look what David says here. He says, For you have possessed, you have bought us. Psalms 139, verse 13. For you have, Hana, you have purchased us. You have possessed my inward parts. Even in this condition, he says, You have, Shaka, you have covered me. As he did in your be offense me about, even in my mother's womb. Before you were born, he knew who was Israel. He did not take one chance at all. He made sure that the dam of your shoe was significant and sufficient. He guarded you in the womb of your mother's belly. He guarded you. He shakha, he heads you about, he fence you about. Uh, and things that your mind would have taken you over to, he did not allow your mind to take you there. Things that you would have done, you don't know why and how you did not do it. Uh, he didn't allow you to do it. Uh, things you would have performed, you don't know how you did because he guarded you. He heads your mind about in the womb uh, of your mama. You are the purchaser. You are the principal assessment for the foundation of the earth, Yisrael. Yes, he knew he was going to pay the price for you. Your fire was greater than silver and gold. Uh, there was nothing uh, in his creation could uh, equate the, the worth of a nation of his people. So he set his mind uh, in the bosom uh, of a clay body uh, and suffer the shame and death to us back from the way of darkness and sin. We're not getting by. That's what we need strong men. We need old men that are wise. We need old men that are beautiful. We need old men with love in their heart. We need old men that know how to love. We need old men that have the sense of love. We need old men that when you embrace them, you sense love. You sense a, a caring. Hell, you don't find that today. It says here in the book of... Uh, I'm not going to finish all this today. We'll come back again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it says in Mishli, Proverbs 8 and 22... Y'all did not just purchase us yesterday or on Pesach. They were his seed before he even, before the earth was formed. How do I know? Because my assurance in my bosom rests in the power of this testimony, Proverbs 8.22. It says, Almighty Yahweh possess, he purchase, he cannot, me, when? In the beginning. He did it with your shoe. He uses the word reshit, the pattern. He did it in the beginning. Yah possessed me in the beginning of his way, of his derek. And the way that we should walk, he bought us in the beginning. He knew the way. He ordained the way. He ordained the way of Adam and of He had purchased us before them, before we went out of the way. 
He purchased us in the beginning in the, in the Rishith. He said before his works of old or as he had purchased us. He bought us from the Rishith. Before we were, he was. And before he was, he had us because we is in his mind. Yeah, we is. Not we are, we is in his mind. You is, you is. He purchased us from the beginning. Yeshua was the, was the lamb from the beginning. And all the great Melachim, not one, not one could stand and substantiate the power of your like Yeshua. There's not a thing that he created that cannot substantiate the power of that testimony, but that which he has purchased. When a man purchased something, he protects it. When he purchased something, he protects it. He knows how he has labored to get it. He has spent all his money, has worked out overtime. Yes, but you don't go in there and knock that down. He's not going to allow the devil to destroy us. That's why he commands us, come to the store. Come to the rich storehouse. That's what the feast days all represent. That's what, uh, that's what Sukkoth represent. In, in the midst of all of the, uh, the calamities and trials after all the feast days, you can go to the storehouse and eat. You got plenty in the barn. Uh, you got plenty in your room. You got plenty in your mind. Uh, and so that it keep you until the next year of Yah's year, the season of planning. That's the way we as men should be. We should always have a reservoir of the wisdom of Yah. Just like a camel that the fat on his back that he can go days without water and weeks uh, and months. Just like the bear when it hibernates, it eats enough of the fat and the protein. When it sleeps, uh, when it arrives in the winter and the spring, is fat and ready to go hunt. We should have a reservoir of the Torah of Yah in our minds. And it should make us fat and greasy and we look fat. And we look greasy. The gladness of his Ruach, we have the anointing of his Ruach upon us. Uh, come on, Yisrael, yeah, that's the way it should be. Yeah. That way you should not be like they were five years ago, five days ago. Uh. You should not act like the old man you did uh, two years ago, a year ago. Uh, and your temperament is still the same. You should not be the same damn silly woman uh, you were six months ago. Yeah. Grow up! Yeah. T.D. Jake choked like this, the whole house would go out on him. You couldn't wear them $50,000, $85,000 watches. I know that. It says the love, the heart of the prudent, of those that have the being or the be not. The wise of the prudent or the love of the prudent, uh, he says he buys or kana, he buys knowledge. When a man is not a prudent man, he can't buy knowledge. When a man doesn't see the, receive the Musa of Yah, the counsel, he cannot buy knowledge. When a man always wants to show what he knows, uh, he's not a, a man that is of knowledge. He's an insecure man because he doesn't have anything. And what he has is not of great value. That's why he's trying to propagate that and show it to others because he doesn't possess nothing. What a man possess something, you can tell a strong man from a weak man. When I would go to the natural gyms, you could tell those that, uh, that were strong and those that were weak. You could tell by the continuous exercise and the muscles were strong, they looked strong, their bodies looked stronger. And those that were pretenders, you could tell that. You can tell a strong man and a pretender. You can tell in his walk, his straw, his countenance, uh, the beauty that emanates from his face. Uh. When Moshe came down off that mountain, he was a strong man. His face shone as though that the lights uh, of the heavens were in his face. Uh. When a man comes into the visitation, listen, uh, not before the presence of Yah, but when he comes into the visitation of the Dabarim, of the word of Yah, of great power, you will see a light shine in that man's face. Uh. You will see a beauty shot in that man's face. Huh? You don't see a damn thing in the face of the men today, but this juvenile immaturity, and they, and, they, and they operate on their little boyish emotions. Come on, I can uproot little Abner in the next minute. He'll say, oh, Poppy, come on, let's do something. He recalls so fast, a boy recalls quicker than a man. I can get on that little boy. I said, well, thump your head, boy. And he will get that look on his face in the next two minutes. You give me some... Some water, son. He's how many pieces of ice you want, Papi? That's what he'll say. Even children have a greater resolve. Even a boy like that. We just tied him the other day. He didn't go back and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Boy jumped on his bike, went home. If I sit him over here, he'd come and say, Yes, but you want some, Papi? To the young. Toda ya for the little one. Toda ya. 
Yeshua took a child and sat in the midst of them all. He said, unless you become like one of these little ones, you will in no one enter in. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he sat the little ones among me. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad he set the little ones among Israel. Don't you know the story of Israel? All those over 19 never enter in. Hallelujah. They were old, silly, formless fools that day. Yes, they were. They never entered into the promises of Yah. The promises of Yah, the word promise, can I tell you, my Ima? It means it's Dabarim. His word, what he speaks. They never went in. They never went in. They taught the children wickedness. And when they went in, they were more wicked than their mamas and daddies. We are the Sadiq men. You will know he's a Sadiq man or a Sadiq nation when there are those that cry and sigh against the wickedness of Yisra'ya. And it begins in their own heart when they bow say, yeah, I'm a wicked, wretched thing undone. I mean, I pray for Yisra'ya, but I, I got to contend with me more than I pray for me, yeah. My prayer is over like, what a vile thing. I'm, I'm a wicked. I, I, yeah, I ain't worth a damn. I talk to him that way. My words don't offend my Bob. They may offend your Jubilama. They don't offend him. That's why I talk to him. I'm not worth a damn. A wretched thing, a thing that is not even of any value, you would put your ruach in. Forgive me. Forgive me, Yah. And to think that we have some great value, you're not worth nothing. We're just like the grass. As the grass fades, we're getting old on. We fade away on. Silly old man. I'm talking to the silly men today that are not guarding the gate, that are not standing at the shachach, the gate, guarding their mind and their wicked spirits, that they do not personify the strength of the Torah of Yah. He put them to guard the house, to fight, to be strong. We got a bunch of damn silly boys that like to extrapolate from their own damn dumbness to talk. A preacher, I want to just talk to you. No, you're not talking to me because I, I don't have time for that. Well, I will ask you a question. Well, what is the question? Well, I want to know what you believe in. And I said, I don't believe a damn thing because it doesn't make any difference what I believe. What does the Torah say? Don't call me and ask me what I believe. Show me what the book says. They can't even show you. They can't even go back and show you what they... Well, it was somewhere. One called me the other day and he was talking about the second... I said, well, that's... A, you know, I said, well, it's in the book there. It's in one place. I said, well, I'll show you where it's at. I know where it's at. I said, it's here in the book of Bimit Bar and here's that. I said, I can show you where it's at. I know what it says. Well, you think you're the first one to call me on that? You think I, you're the first one I've answered on that question? I'll show you your ignorance, how wrong you are. That's why I taught that message, the second page. Because there's a doctor out there. And these young juvenile boys, they buy that. Oh, well, you know, brother, when I was a soccer boy, yeah, yeah, you see that, 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 that's stupid. It's only one. There's only one that died for our sin. He's coming a second time. Let me move quickly. I want to close to you all right? <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to destroy this old clay body of ours. And I'm so glad he is. That's the reason he's going to do it. In order to cause his great, great uh, purchase possession to rise up. Can I get you an example of that? David said here, David said in Psalm 74 verse 1. Psalm 74, verse 1. Believe the word of Yah, Yisra'ya. He asked Yah this question, Psalms to Helium 74, verse 1. He says, Yah, why have you, Zanak? Why have you rejected? Why have you cast us off forever? He's talking about Yisra'ya. He has not cast us off forever. You have the sense like that at times, don't you? I know I do. Why have you, Zanak? Why have you cast us off Olam viat uh, forever. He said, why does your anger smoke against the sheep uh, of your pastor? Are we not the uh, sheep of his pastor? We are soon the sheep of the pastor of Yah that he brings us to. Look what he says in verse 2. 
He tells Yah, now you think Yah's forgotten us? He tells Yah to remember Yah. The word congregation is oh hell, and we are hellish mess, isn't it? You spell it that way, O-H-E-L. Oh hell, oh hell, oh hell. And all hell comes from amongst his congregation, doesn't it? Yeah. Proper name for congregation. Yahweh's, that congregation we give him hell. Oh hell, oh hell. He says, remember your oh hell, remember your congregation in verse 2. Why? Which you, which you, which you, which you have purchased, which you have got now, which you have redeemed, which you have bought, which you are the possessor of. He says, remember your congregation. That's what he says. Remember your congregation. What of whom you have purchased of old from the beginning. Did I not just read in the first word? Was that uh, of old uh, you have purchased your people of the old? Uh, what verse was that? Uh, in, 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 in Proverbs 8.22. He said the congregation of purchase of old. Uh, he says we are the rod. We are the rod. Joachim said to us that day, you remember what he said about the rod? He said the rod is the Torah of Yah. We are the Torah bearers of Yah. He says who is the rod of your inheritance, which you have got. You have redeemed, you have paid the price in full by the dam of Yahshua, which you have redeemed of this Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. He has bought us, Yisrael. It is the dam of Yahshua, I'm sure, that has purchased us. He has redeemed us, nation. Hallelujah. And he expects the strong men to guard the house. He expects us men to be strong at the guard the house. And don't be so damn juvenile and immature. And let your little emotion get yourself in hell. You got to grow up and mature. You cannot just uh, act upon your emotions. You have to act according to this. Yeah. Ain't nothing like a strong man. Ain't nothing like a warrior. Yeah. He dies for the sake of the kingdom. I'm a warrior. I'm a cover. And the beauty of it, I haven't had to give up anything for him. What did I have? Tell me, please. I had nothing. Headaches and agony and burden. You didn't give up a damn thing. He gave up everything for you. Yeah. Well, I gave up. I had a job making eight dollars an hour. Silly boy. My house almost paid for a silly boy. That's all. That's what you constitute as something of value. You gave up something for him. And he costs you sure to purchase us, to reassure that purchase on the stake. And that's what you constitute. You are a silly man. I gave up my children. Your children are wicked. Your sons and your daughters, your daughters are whores, and your sons are effeminate little uh, punk popping boys. Uh, and that's a fact, your grand youngers and all. Uh, I say to you all, I have relatives I don't even know. I don't even know my sister's children. I don't know them. Only what I know is the oldest one. The other ones, if I saw them on the street, I would not know them. I talked to her one day and she said, I, I said, how old is that boy? She said, 30 something. I said, what? He's 33? I saw that boy was like that. And little 50 miles from me. Let them call me crazy. I don't give a damn. You say what they want to about me. No fellowship in that. I don't pretend. I don't play. I'm not going to let them mock my Abba. Well, she's precious. Though she's not a precious daughter. She's a wicked woman that despises you and his truth. He's not a precious son. He's a wicked boy. He doesn't love you. You substantiate his rightness. You call me wicked and wrong. You call Yisrael. They're not kind, but you call that wicked bastard nice. That's my sister. She's a wicked woman. She hates Yah. I will not substantiate them. She would say to me, oh, you know, I say, woman, I would not know him. The only son of yours I would know is your oldest boy. And he may not even know me. I don't know your children. I don't know my oldest brother's children. I don't know my nieces and nephews. I don't know them. Yeah. Well, she's your, that daughter, she's 40 years old. I said, you think I would know her? She was a little old gal when I last saw her like that. Oh, they know that I'm a crazy man. 
You may be troubled, but I'm not troubled. It may bother you, but it doesn't bother me. I have my Ach, my Chut. I have Yisraya. I'd rather be by his side than to be by their side. I'd rather see his face in the morning at breakfast than to see their face. And I don't pretend. Well, I know you try to go see them. No, not me. I'll let them know from day one, you despise my Abba and my ignorance. They're the enemies of the stake of Yah. They're the enemies of Yah. How can they be your friends? Any man that is a friend of the world, those that constitute their order by the way of the world and the jurisdiction of the world, you're an enemy of Yah. You're, oh, yay. You can dress it up all you want to. But they're my children. They, 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 those are not my children. Yah doesn't call them his children. He calls the children of light and the children of darkness. Talking about the children of Yah and the children of the devil. They're not my children. I don't have that kind of affinity. I don't have that kind of affection, although I would not do them wrong. If they were hungry, what are you you're hungry, boy? Come on, say, come on over here. Who are you, man? Don't worry about who I am. Give him what he want. Give him a big box of that chicken. How many pieces do you want, man? Two pieces would be nice, but if I can get three or four pieces, give him a six-piece box. Who are you? Don't worry about who I am. You see, that's going to be enough for you? You need a little change? Yeah, I could use some. Here's $20. Now don't look, boy. Don't buy nothing wicked with it. Buy food. I promise you that. Oh, there are lots of you, but that's all right. I use that to say, I don't have that kind of emotional drawback because you cannot be a warrior. Or I'm a Uriah. You're a damn liar. You're not a Uriah. When he could go home to that fragrance of Bathsheba, the tender, that beautiful bronze, brown, skinted woman, he said, hell no, David. No, my king. Rather sleep at the door, my king, than to go home and enjoy the fragrance of her brass and enjoy her titties in my days of my youth. He laid out the door of the king. The king tried to get him drunk with all the stupid of uh, stu uh, 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 stupidness. Uh, he, he, he stumbled out. He got him to get your hands off me. Now I'm a warrior. I'm a rest at my king's door. He suddenly rests. You're not. Hey, you're right. You're a coward. Get out of my face. When the letter came, Dave, he wants you on the front line. He rejoiced. He said, tell my Bathsheba, I'll see you by and by. He knew he was going to die. No greater love than this that a man would lay down his life for his react for his friend. This damn wicked world won't do. You'll lay down for your faggot son and your big fat whole daughter, won't you? Your pimp popping youngins. I ain't taking nothing back. I say that I got a fat sister. She's fat. And tell the heifer when she has to have her put on some clothes. Don't come here like that. Cover your eyes. Well, David, I, I say, woman, shut your mouth. You come in my presence, you better cover yourself. Well, David, that's all I can buy. I say, you woman, you better buy something else. I say, shut your mouth. Quit talking. Okay, I'm going to just stop talking. I say, better off then. You get along with me well if you just quit talking, woman. It's amazing because she, even when I talk to her like that, she still honors me. She does. She knows better. She knows better. Big belly heifer, she knows better. She knows better. She will get quiet. She said, I'll listen to you. I said, well, that's what you need to do anyway. Just be quiet. Listen to me. That's what we need to do. Listen to Yah. Let me close it with this last verse here. Hallelujah. We are the purchase inheritance of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. There are two verses I want to close with. There's more to this, as Zachin Yarami always says. But uh, I want to speak from this. It's in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah. He talks about the day. We need assurance, don't we? I know I do. Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah. I would like to finish all this, but I'm more out too. I said to my Isha, what time did I come to bed last night? She said, nine. I said, you silly woman. You were in bed at seven, and I was in bed at eight. I was in bed. That ain't like me. My body is, is I was eight o'clock. And I woke up at 135. I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going back to sleep. I made myself go back to sleep. 
Woke up at 5, I said, no, sir, I'm not getting up to 7.30. I made it up to 7.25. I want to close with these two last verses that give us some kind of assurance. Yoshua, he is the pur purchased possession. We, we are possessing his bosom. And this is what Yah speaks of a time in the Akrith. He speaks of the kids, the last days of the time of great agony. And he gives us a picturesque picture of what shall be, what shall be the promise of the nation of Yisrael. And what we shall hold on to, there's only one thing. And I want to give you that resolve here in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. He says, uh, as he speaks of the beauty of Yahshua, his nature, and this melchut, this kingdom of the wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge of Yahweh, where we should dwell. He speaks of that. And he gives us precise beauty of this kingdom. He tells us in verse 11, he said, it shall enter in, it shall bow, it shall come to pass in that day. That day is the Pacific. He said, there shall be a yom, a day, that it shall come to pass. Listen, I love this. He said that the sovereign Omar Yahweh shall set his hand, he used the word Yasef, his hand against. He's going to gather, he's going to bring them collectively together. He's going to set his hand again. Do you all hear that? He's going to set his hand. Yahshua is his right hand, isn't he? Yahshua is coming, isn't he? He's going to set his hand again, again. Again, he says the second time, would your shoes come again? He's coming for one thing. The second time, the second time, he uses the word, the word recover to kana, to buy, to buy the remnant, the shah. The second time, he's coming the second time. You understand this is the prophecy, Israel. You're not going to get this by reading from, uh, from Yeshaya 1 to the second book of Yeshaya. You got to study. You got to labor in the Torah of Yah. You got to be watched. You got to be able to hear other men. You got to hear the ark when they speak uh, so you can extrapolate from what they speak. Uh, and you can lay that down. You think yesterday when I left from here, I went straight home. That's why I said 2 o'clock because I went home and did some studying. Uh, when, when he finished talking, he finished preaching because he said some valuable stuff to us. And I laid down two messages, one or two messages yesterday. Just at that time, I laid out all the foundation. May not ever preach them, but I have them. We must show up. He said the second time. He's going to recover the remnant, the boy here, of his people, of his people, which shall be left. Which shall be left. It's vital to understand the nations and their conditions. Where they are. He says he's going to cover the people which are left. He's going to recover them from Ashua. We know who Ashua was. Don't we know that? He was the second son of Shem. Was he not? Ashua. Ashua. He's coming the second time, isn't it? So all of this is relevant. And see, men don't know how to extract from Torah to understand the dynamics of this. He writes this secretly here, my Amos, so we can understand. It will take a man in a laborious mind to labor to understand this. That's who Ashua was. He was the second son of Shem. And he gives us the indications of what nations of people of the mindset that we should operate in. Listen, the second chapter. He said, and also from Misraim, we all know it's the land of the Copt, of the Copt, of the gods. And in all of our minds, we got all kinds of gods. He's going to redeem us in the, when he comes the second time. He's going to buy back. He's going to, the price, uh, he's going to buy us back, Yisraya. Although we've been bought, he's going to give that sure price when he comes. Uh, we're going to know that we've been purchased. Uh, he says, and also uh, from the land of Pathros and from Cush, uh, those that we know what, who Cush is, the Cushites, uh, they were those that we call black or the dark-skinned people. And our ways have been blackened. Uh, we walk in the whole shack of darkness. Uh, our minds are far from you. Uh, there is no love for Torah. We don't know how to love each other. We don't know how to give a damn about you. Uh. I'm straight with us. He shows us the characteristics of us, his kingdom. He says, and also, who would think this word? He says, also from Elan. Elan. 
Understand that? He says, for eternity, iniquity, ulam, but it's ilam. That's what ilam is. It is forever. It is eternity. He says, uh, he says not only from ilam, but from uh, jinnah. Now, if you search the Torah to understand, I search it for stuff like this. To understand, when I read a word like that, I want to see what the Torah says about Shina. It is the country where the two rivers, what are the two rivers, the waters of rivers, what that represent? The house of Yisra'ya. It represents Yehuda and Yisra'ya, doesn't it? Sure does. It represents the second time when Yahshua is coming. He came the first time as the kinsman redeemer. And when he comes the second time, he's coming to make sure that he reaped the harvest that Yah has sown. There's nothing like a man that's planted by the rivers of the waters of Yah. His, his, his ruach should bear the fruit in this new time. Everything has meaning in the book. And you think you're going to read and understand that you're a silly man. You're a silly woman. You're not going to understand it that way. You need to see what the Torah says about Shina. Every word is every word pure. We the servants of Yah, we love it. We just brush over what Yah says. We brush over what he says. When a man study a case that this case has gone cold for 30 years, uh, there's usually one little statement in there that they can turn that cold case file in and find the one that committed the crime. Uh, it was that word of the testimony that resolved the whole thing. Uh, he had to carefully examine uh, everywhere. We don't examine the word of Yah. Yeah. Yeah. Examine every kind of damn fall in every gossip. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, preacher man. <laughs> Re'ach and preach. Hallelujah. He says, and also from Hamath. Hamath is the wall city. Has he not fenced us in? Did not Hashatan know that the purchase of Yehob? He said to Yahweh, you have fenced, you have hedged him in. Take down the walls and I'll kill him. He said, I'll tell you what, afflict him, but you can't take the breath of him. Don't touch the breath, I'm not going to lie to you. He's taken down the walls of our constitutions. And he's going to allow every force of hell to try us. Our minds, we, folks are going to go crazy. They're going to go free. We're already doing that. And Hamath represents the wall or the city of the wall. That's what his uh, Shema is. It is the fence of hedge. It is the thorny hedge that guards us in. I'm glad I take time for us, Yisraya. I'm glad I take time to labor. I'm glad I take time to study. I'm glad I take time in the week when my body doesn't feel like doing that. I'm glad I do that. He said he's going to take them from the E, the owls of the sea. We wish to sing a song. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember? Oh, we sang that in the segregated school. He said, I'm going to get them from the, e, the islands that you will not. That's what he, when he said, an island stands along, doesn't it? It's detached from, it's not a peninsula surrounded by water on three sides, but an island is surrounded by four sides. And when the waves of hell rise up against us, like when the flood come out against this woman, what the revelation talks about, uh, he said, I'm going to redeem you from the E, the islands, where you will not have to stand alone. You will have not think that you're by yourself because Yisra, yeah, my ram, my purchased possession, uh, you in my hand. Put it in the hands of him. He will make it all right. Put it in the hands of Yahweh. Everything will be all right. Put it in the hand of him. And it all shall be all right. Put it in the hand of Yahweh. He shall make it all right. Trust in your sure Israel. Oh, trust in your sure. Oh, trust in the name of your sure. Yah will make it right. Put it in the Master's mighty hand. And trust your hour Put it in the hands of Yahweh. And y'all shall make it right. Trust Yahweh, Israel. Trust him in the hour that we are in. Trust our Abba, Yahweh, Israel. Trust our Abba. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. 
It shall be well with you, Yisrael, if we put it in God's hand. Last verse that I'm going to close. It says in Revelation 3.13, 3, 13, For that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark, the oath, or the name of the beast, of Nahash, and the number of his name. He has purchased us. We are bought with a price. And we shall not buy silver or gold. We shall get. We shall buy the wisdom. We shall buy the sermon. We shall buy the counsel. That's what we're going to buy. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all, Yisrael. May he strengthen his beyond. We greet you all and all you that I did not mention your names. May he enrich you and bless you. Send an offering to help us stay on this live broadcast. If you have been enriched today, send help. This may Yah grant you shalom this Shabbat as we continue in this Moed. Remember that he paid the price. Mama, daddy didn't pay it. But yeah, through the living power of his Hamashiach, the offering, the whole offering, the holocaust, the whole of the burnt offering, Yahshua is. So you don't need the ashes of the red heifer. You don't need the scapegoat. You need the power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. We're glad to see the few that have come to be with us. May Yah bless you as well and strengthen you all. We pray that your experience here will be something, um, something you, can, uh, you can remember remember us by. In your shoes, then we will ask us If he will come, he may grant us a blessing today in your shoes' name. He will dismiss us. Again, we do greet you all that are listening by via live stream, Israel. You know, the types of messages that we have and that you can hear uh, on the live stream there at uh, Voice of Victory. YahwehSwore.org. You, you just don't hear these types of messages, Israel. There are those of you that have been listening for a while. You've been here. You've been there. I have heard. I have listened. And you don't find messages like this, Israel, where we are able to be fed with understanding, with the riches of Almighty Yahweh. There's no places like this you can go to, Israel. Not like this one. Hallelujah. So we that are listening, those that are being fed by the teaching and by the hearing of the word of Yahweh, we should be with those that are able to support, that will help, that will encourage, that the house of Israel may go on, Israel. We should not be those that give grudgingly, but give freely. Then not Yahshua, he gave freely of all of his substance, all that he had, his possession, his flesh, his blood, his dom, Yisraya, he gave it all for the house of Yisraya. Hallelujah. So why can we not give unto him? Why can we not give unto Yahweh of our sustenance, Yisraya? Even though many times we think it's not much, Yisraya, but it's of great value what we do have and what we do give. Our time, our ears, our love, and our hearts. And when you do that, Yisraya, you, you will be able to come with an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. Not only an offering of praise, an offering of todah, but also offer a substance that it may be given to the house and it may be put back into the storage house that that one that does not have can be given what he is needed or what she is needed, Israel. So let us not give unto Yahweh grudgingly, but freely, free will offering unto Almighty Yahweh. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. And let us shoot, let us turn towards Jerusalem. Abu Yahweh, we do barak you for another beautiful Shabbaton you have given us. You have fed us, Abu Yahweh. You have laid out your Torah that has been sent from the throne room, from the fire of your throne, Abu Yahweh. And we do total you for that, for those that have come here that dwell amongst us, Abu Yahweh. And those that are listening, Abu Yahweh, we do total you for them. We ask Yahweh, your American will continually be a camp around Yisrael, that you continue to make us strong with understanding and with wisdom. And in all things we do give you told out for Yahshua, Hamashiach, and the Dom. In all things we do barak you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.